What's going on YouTube? So I actually wanted to make a video about a broad summary of what we can do with the ISS when it comes to radio communication. If you're not involved with the ham radio community, you may not know that there's actually several different ways that you can use to communicate with the ISS itself, this space station. And so this is just going to be a basic summary or a broad overview of all the different methods that we can use. Uh, to communicate with it, whether it be a digital radio protocol or over voice, or even talking to astronauts. And uh, several of these I've actually done and demonstrated uh, in my YouTube channel, which I'll be sure to provide a link below uh, in the description for each of those videos, and we'll talk about them as well. So real quick, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button below. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button on the video and comment down below what type of other content you would like to see. This video came to mind after this past weekend, there was a spacewalk, uh, and during that spacewalk, they actually fixed some of the ham radio equipment on board the ISS. This comes from, uh, in, back in January, they swapped out one of the cables for the antenna feed lines, and ever since then, the radio systems for ham radio operators on board the ISS and the communication has been down. So they did a spacewalk, which was live streamed, and I'll be sure to provide a link for that below as well. Uh, they did a spacewalk and actually swapped out uh, the cable with the old one and now the onboard radio systems are working again. That just kind of came to my mind and since all those radio systems are operational I'm going to talk about three or four different methods that we can use to communicate with the ISS with a ham radio. I want to start off by saying that the two radio systems on board the ISS is the Kenwood D710E and the Kenwood D710GA. Those are the radios that they use to communicate with ham radio operators on earth as well as uh, DigiPeat different radio pack packets and voice um, uh, on board the ISS. There's two different call signs that I know of that the ISS uses to communicate. Uh, the USA uses the uh, NA1SS and the Russian segment is NS0ISS. So first we're going to talk about the uh, onboard voice repeating functionality. So if you don't know what a repeater is, basically uh, you upload voice or you transmit voice to something uh, the repeater listens in on the frequency for that voice and it retransmits it in real time on a different frequency. So the user that is using the repeater would have the downlink, download, the downlink frequency programmed to listen to and the upload frequency programmed to transmit on. And so what happens there is uh, users can transmit to the ISS while it's above them and they're their voice is actually digipeated back down to earth and another user listening can hear that person even if they're across the United States or you know across uh, sometimes countries so it's a really cool functionality for communication uh, you have to use a um, an app or some type of way to track the ISS to see when it's above you and what kind of uh, what kind of altitude or angle it's going to be at because the better it is overhead, the easier it's going to be for you to communicate. So you can use uh, websites such as ISS Tracker to track where the ISS is, or different phone apps like Heavens Above to track where the ISS is to see when you might have the best chance of success when it comes to uh, communicating over the ISS. So the uplink frequency for the ISS depends on uh, several different factors, and uh, one of them being what part of the world that the ISS is actually over, or what country you're in. So to use the voice repeater on the ISS and hear other ham radio operators, uh, it is actually cross-band. So it uses different bands for transmit and receive, and this kind of helps facilitate communication back and forth. So to talk to other hams from the ISS digipeter, uh, we have a downlink frequency of 437.800 and a uplink frequency of 145 dot 990 megahertz and that has a CCS tone of CTCSS tone of 67 Hertz so if you're watching this channel you probably know what all that means but basically uh, that means that you would listen on the 437 uh, dot 800 megahertz and you would transmit on the 145 dot 990 and you would need that tone of 67 Hertz to make sure that you're breaking the squelch on the repeater on the ISS. And that will allow you to communicate with other ham radio, radio operators. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is really cool, and I just want to put a quick link of a demonstration of this going on. November Delta 1 Charlie, stroke mobile, Florida. November Delta 1 Charlie, this is NA1SS. 
NA1SS, November Delta 1 Charlie, good morning. Try again. NA1SS, November Delta 1 Charlie, Stroke Mobile in Florida, good morning. Hey, good morning, Florida, how are you? Great, we came out here in the middle of a farm field to try to get you this morning. This is a rare occurrence, but every once in a while, the astronauts on board the ISS will actually use the ham radio equipment on board to communicate with people on Earth. Most of the time, this is with schools. So schools will schedule contacts with uh, ARISS, which are the people that manage this program. And uh, they will allow uh, children in schools to talk to astronauts over the ham radio. Every once in a while, they will just jump on them randomly, sometimes in the mornings or the nights, whatever it be when they wake up and uh, when they have downtime. Uh, there are some astronauts that are more known to do this, but if you would like a chance at that, they actually talk on uh, 145.800 on the downlink. And the voice uplink is actually uh, determined by what region you're in. So here in the United States, uh, that would be 144.490. And for uh, Europe, Russia, and Africa, that would be 145.200. And so with that 145.800, uh, if you want a chance of talking to the astronauts, what you would do is just kind of listen as the ISS goes over to that frequency, and you would call out on, for example, for me, 144.490, and say, NA1SS, uh, this is KN4MKB, or whoever you are, uh, is anybody copy? And there has been some uh, reports of success doing that. I've seen on the internet sometimes people, if they see the ISS going over, they'll just try it, and every once in a while, there'll be an astronaut that's there listening. Or sometimes they'll just hear the astronaut calling out uh, for anybody to talk to. And a lot of times they'll do this before a school contact, maybe days before or hours before, just to make sure that the radio system's working and it kind of lets anybody with a license communicate with an astronaut, which is one of my big goals to do for this year. Besides that, uh, there are also scheduled SSTV transmissions that come from the ISS. If you don't know what SSTV is, it is uh, slow scan television and it is a method of transmitting analog images over the radio. Uh, depending on the protocol, it could take anywhere between 30 seconds to maybe even five minutes to send an image. But I have you know, demonstrated on this channel using a Baofeng radio to receive one of those images from the ISS. They typically do these events during special anniversaries uh, and things of that matter and they'll transmit images back to earth and you can receive them in the form of audio, record them, and then pipe them into a program such as MMSSTV where it would decode that uh, into an image for you. And this is really cool and you can actually submit those images back uh, to ARISS and they will send you a QSL card confirming that you received a transmission from the ISS. And I actually have one of those I'd like to show you today. So this is a QSL uh, card I received from ARISS. And this is something I got a couple of years ago when I uh, decoded an image that was transmitted from the ISS. And so I uh, submitted this image online and uh, wrote down the contact information and sent them my information and they sent me back this card. So this is just a confirmation saying I, I received an image from the ISS. And you can get these pretty easy. Uh, if you have a ham radio license, all you have to do is just uh, decode the image and you can use that with a $30 radio and a cell phone to record the audio and a computer to decode the image. And uh, yeah, that's a really cool thing and they send you a little certificate too, so it's, it's kind of nice. But that's just another method of communication with the ISS. You can't transmit images back, uh, but you can receive them. The last thing I'm going to talk about here today is actually packet radio. Uh, and this is something that you've seen probably all over my channel, but the ISS has an AX25 or APRS digipeter on board. And what this digipeter does is it listens for uh, radio packets on the AX25 protocol, usually in the form of APRS, and it takes them and it will digipeat them back to earth, kind of like a voice repeater. There are a couple more extra settings that you need to do that is a little different from terrestrial uh, APRS digipeating, and mainly that's just making sure that you have ARISS in your path and uh, I've made a whole detailed video on how to do this as well so I'll actually link that as well uh, in the description but basically um, they make websites for tracking uh, uh, stations that have been coded by the ISS uh, which you see on screen here and you pretty much just need a radio capable of APRS 
and you would transmit that radio packet up and it will come back down and you can use that to both communicate with other ham radio operators and it transmits your GPS location as well so you can see where everybody else is uh, relative to your position. This right here is probably one of the more fun things to me because you can actually use it to text message, email, and uh, all kinds of stuff uh, as well. So you can actually use those to text message somebody through the, through the space station if you'd like and uh, they'll receive it and they can reply as well. Keep in mind it's about a 10 to 15 minute window when the ISS does go over so you have very limited time to make sure you get those messages back and forth. But nevertheless, it's a really cool system anyways. Anyways, I really, uh, I thought this would be a really cool video to make. Not everybody's too familiar with all of the methods of communication, and there's a lot of combat, like, uh, com conflicting information online about what's available right now, what's working right now, what frequencies to use. So I hope this overview video kind of uh, gives you a step forward into thinking, like, what type of communication you would like to do when it comes to the ISS or uh, just letting you know what's available and what's working right now because it seems to change every several months. So right now, i verified two different sources uh, that the information in this video is accurate. And uh, if you'd like to know more information about communicating with the ISS, so if there's a question I didn't answer, be sure to let me know down in the comments. I try my best to reply to everything. And uh, I really appreciate everybody watching this video. And uh, that'll be it for now. 73 to you. Have a good one.